Florida. Kind of what were your your impressions of seeing him? I know he doesn't he's not a tight end or a or a fullback, but I mean just as an offensive coach, what do you see out of him? Well one of the things you really know is you know Coach Coach Myers had a great relationship down in that part of Florida. Obviously you know, Mark Antoni who does a phenomenal job of knowing every kid you know in the in the country is unbelievable with that. Those relationships I'm sure started well in advance. And what's really nice about that is, is when you have relationships, and every coach is going to go out into geographical areas, and the number one thing you got to do in recruiting is get to know the people that are there. And then as you're there, you're going to continue to build those relationships, foster, hey, listen, you know, least go listen to this coach. Go sit down and have a long conversation. Take his phone calls when you're legally allowed to call. Then all of a sudden you can get that kid interested in you. Because if you go in blind and you don't know anyone in the school, you don't know anyone, you know, in the community and just say, hey, I want you to be a Buckeye, it's really hard. And fostering those relationships and having a previous experience in recruiting areas is tremendously important recruiting. Dan. Hey, Coach, it's Seth Dan Watson, WTVN Radio. Uh, how much did it help to have the three holdover coaches and in what ways did they help in the recruiting effort? Well, I know this. I came in on January 2nd, my first day here, and things were very much in place at that time, and it was really a phenomenal, you look at the recruiting board, you look at the things that were being done at that time, things were well in place. I mean, they really were. It was a well oiled machine. We were still trying to identify some people that we needed to retarget or go back after and recruit and continue to recruit, and Coach had mentioned some of those. But you can see a lot of things from place. And it's a phenomenal turnaround. When you talk about travel schedule, recruiting schedules, phone calls, emails, Facebook, all the things that you're allowed to do and getting coaches out. Then you have dead period, you know, when all of a sudden you have the, uh, the national convention, you have the holidays, you have those dead period times. It's really unbelievable how much work's being done behind the scenes in order to create the kind of success we have today. Brandon. Coach, uh, Brandon Castell with the Ozone. Um, Coach uh, Meyer mentioned um, Taylor Decker. You know, he called Ohio State, talk, telling them that he always wanted to be a Buckeye. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Taylor and how important it was to get a kid like that in this class? Well, that was an interesting recruiting process. There's no question about that one. Obviously, I recruited Taylor and was well documented at the University of Notre Dame at that time. And, and uh, it was one of those that really I did not recruit Taylor Decker until he stepped on campus. It was really one of a true fact. And, Taylor knew that his position coach has left, his recruiting coach has left Notre Dame and came to Ohio State. It was a relationship issue. We keep saying the word relationships a lot, and it keeps coming out that those relationships were built, and all of a sudden he didn't have relationships with, with people that were there. Obviously, at that point, it, he decided to call Coach Meyer and say, I'm very interested, and, and uh, you know, it, it was a good thing. And his, you know, and his mom and dad were great people, and obviously, you know, through that recruiting process, got to know them very, very well. And when he came on campus for his official visit, he felt tremendously comfortable. He academically felt comfortable. He socially with our players felt comfortable. He had a great relationship already building with Coach Meyer between the, you know, all the multiple phone calls. And, and then when he had a chance to sit down in a room with Coach Warner and really have conversations with him again and, you know, recruiting meals when I could sit down and, you know, and, and my wife and I could go sit there with, with mom and, and really reassure her that all the things are intact for him, her son to be successful socially, academically, and on a football field. Uh, I, I think it was an easy turn from there. Yeah. Yeah, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Tim, was there ever a moment in this recruiting season or – Ten times maybe when you said, when you talk about Notre Dame instead of Ohio State, did you ever have a Freudian during this period? I try not to. I want you to know that. Yeah. Obviously, you get in that tone and you answer a phone and you say, or you introduce yourself. No, the reality is, I'm just tremendously pleased. I've said it many times already, you know, media-wise. This is a phenomenal place. Coach Meyer is a tremendous recruiter, and, and, and the success of this class is very evident to his ability to identify people, target relationships, find the identifiers, the champions and of the people who, uh, you know, that are going to help this young man make a great decision. And uh, I, so far, I've been very, very impressed. You know, I've only been here, like I said, since January 2nd, and it's been a whirlwind for the last month, but it's been a tremendous experience. Tell me something, though. How, how, do, you, how do you go from selling, like, you know, just put it, get in your head here for a second. How do you go from selling Notre Dame to Taylor Decker, you know, to, tell, to selling him that, yeah, Ohio State's really your place? Well, uh, that is an interesting question. What you really do is you really continue to talk relationships, and you really talk about people, and then you talk about academic fits, and you look at the young man and say, okay, what do you really want academically? Now does Ohio State have the ability to reach those that potential for you? And all those things were in place. And like Coach Meyer said, if they weren't in place, obviously we'd have walked away from the situation. 
young men say, hey, I had, a, I had a different choice, an alternative choice, it been a good situation for me to stay there. The, all of the pieces were in place here also for him. He's a hometown guy. His bedroom at Ohio State in it all through his childhood, you know, like you know, millions of kids in the state of Ohio. Uh, he had an opportunity to really get a great match academically. We walked down into his major, and Adam Owens actually there on a Saturday morning practicing the things that he wants to do for his academic major. I, it wasn't set up. It was really done by accident. It was one of those great moments of recruiting. He said, yes, you know, so it worked out really well. Middle left. Go ahead, sir. Pat Brennan. Go ahead, sir. Um, I passed you in the hallway at around 3.30, and it looked like you were on the phone with the recruit walking from one war room to another. And I'm just wondering, for people that have never been on your side of it, how wild, how chaotic are these days, and how satisfied are you with the end product? No, I always tell people, you know, no offense, I don't want to really uh, you know, isolate any group and, and offend anyone here. Do you ever how you know how you can tell wrestlers they always get those ears are just a little bit funny, you know what I mean? Well, football coaches are the same way from cell phones, you know? And I always tell people, they really prove that there's something wrong with the cell phone and brain power or whatever, you know, it's going to happen to all of us because you live on a phone and, and technology is our friend at times, you know? I mean, one of the things is you can never leave it because it's always going to be with you. And when that recruit calls, you better take that call and you better continue to sell Ohio State because Coach Meyer's right, somebody else will and somebody else is. And it's one of those things, obviously, we always want to try to get, you know, the best in the country, the next class, the next two classes, whatever. You know, we're trying to try crazy. We always want them to call us and get an opportunity to speak and, and develop those relationships. And, uh, you know, I, you caught me on one of those, I guess. Dave. Hi, Tim. Dave Biddle from Bucknuts.com. Um, like you said, Coach Meyer is a phenomenal recruit. I'm sure this class doesn't shock you, but is there part of you that's somewhat surprised that he's only been on the job for two months some of you guys have only been on the job a month and you guys land this good of a class. Does any of that surprise you? No, you know, I, I've been fortunate. I've known Coach Meyer for a long, long time. And, and the one thing that really has been evident throughout his career and, and having an opportunity to be around him is, you know, he's a tr has a tremendous work ethic and he has a purpose about what he's going to do and he has a plan on how to get there. And, and when you really put those three things together, I think it's a tremendous way to accomplish great things. And all those things are really intact. I mean, he, he's an entirely worker. He's got a great plan. And he really is very, very personable with parents, with players. And, and he takes he has, a, he has a knack to have a thousand different conversations with a thousand different kids a day. And, and each of them are special to that person. And when you can have the ability to do that and you make each call, you know, it's not one of those general, hey, you know, hello, I'm Coach Meyer, Ohio State University, you know, and it sounds like you're just trying to do the business approach and thank you very much for calling or glad to talk to you. It isn't like that. He's really going to ask you about mom. He's really going to ask you about dad. He's going to ask you about girlfriend. And he's going to ask you higher classes. Hey, how you doing in science class? You know, I heard you were having trouble in science class. Those things are, are key to a young man feeling, listen, this guy knows me. He knows who I am. And, and he will challenge a young guy to see whether or not he... He's ready to perform at his best when he gets here. And kids like to be challenged. They want to have that purpose, and they know they want to be successful. And, and you know, it's been addressed here many times. I'll bring it up in case I didn't get the question. The one thing that's funny is that, and I, and I told Mark Antonio this before I came up here to speak, is that not one time from January 2nd until today, when I was on a recruiting trip, I was ever asked about any of the NCAA stuff. Not one time. And all the, all the houses and all the places where they as a new guy coming in. So you talk about a tremendous job by the people people who did, did damage control when the bull sanctioned things and all that came out. It was, it was phenomenal. Because I never was asked that question by a high school coach or a recruit at any time. Middle, Kenny. Tim, Kenny wrote a ESPN Cleveland. I was just going to ask about that. If that was a hurdle you had to get over, but obviously not. So what was, what was the one thing that you sold the most about Ohio State? What, what do you think was the... The, the one selling point that would you know lock a kid up. Well, the one selling point is is, is the things that Ohio State can have to offer. One is going to have tremendous academic opportunities for you. When you say academic opportunities, and, and it's something that's very true. When you sit in that house and there's mom on that couch or at that kitchen table, and there's dad and they're looking at you, giving getting ready to give you their son for the next four or five years, and you're telling them what this place needs to do academically for their son, but our son obviously has to meet those challenges academically and do his job. It's important, and, 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 and the university itself is such a tremendous academic institution. Because you can talk about all the things you want to say, when you sit down and you start talking to mom and dad, they want to know academically how this institution is going to 
perform for their son. Secondly, it is the ability to say, we can develop you as a player, develop you as a person, and then have the ability to maybe even prepare you for another level. And, and when you're doing those things and you really truly sound those, you got a chance to be successful in every time you go out and recruit because Ohio State can back all of it up. That's the thing that's beautiful about it. You can back all of it up. It's got the ability to back up academics, got the ability to back up social development, you know, development as a player, development gets to the 